If you're studying to become a web developer, software engineer, or pretty much anything that involves doing something like this, yes. there's a good chance you've heard of technologies like React and Redux, Node, Django, Spring, or Laravel, maybe even stuff like Next.js and Solidity. But what if I told you that these popular technologies aren't at all what you need to learn as a newbie? What if I told you it was kind of boring stuff, like how to problem solve? And what if I told you that this information was coming not just from the depths of my sick and twisted imagination, but from actual hiring managers, senior developers, tech company co-founders, and others in the software industry? Here are five things you absolutely must know as a new programmer. Number one, how to research. This is perhaps the most unsexy skill on this entire list. I mean, come on, research skills? That's what Google's for. Yeah, exactly. You need to know how to use Google. Whether it's diving into the murky waters of Stack Overflow, going deep inside the Mozilla web docs, or combing through a long forgotten gem-filled forum post from 2008 on page 23 of the search results, Google is the gateway. But as a researcher, you should also understand that Google doesn't have a monopoly on solving your problems. Knowing how to navigate your company's internal documentation or even emailing the creator of a long forgotten legacy technology are also forms of research that shouldn't be dismissed. Jeff Atwood, co-founder of Stack Overflow, was explicit about how important research skills are in his controversial post, Please Don't Learn to Code. Published over a decade ago, people still reference this brief yet intense blog post. In it, he writes, please don't advocate learning to code just for the sake of learning how to code, or worse, because of the fat paychecks. Instead, I humbly suggest that we spend our time learning how to research voraciously and understand how the things around us work at a basic level. Number two, version control. The most well-known version control system is probably Git. Officially, Git is a free and open source distributed version control system designed to handle everything from small to very large projects with speed and efficiency. At its core, Git and other version control systems like it is a technical communication tool. Git can be really tricky for new developers. Everything sounds well and good when you're doing basic stuff like pulling, pushing, and committing in the comfort of your own repo, but what happens when you're on a team of 15 developers and you're all working on the same project. Let's be honest, shit gets crazy when you're working on a team. It's tough, if not impossible, to practice many Git concepts by yourself. So the best advice I can give on this one is to find a group of developers to practice with. You don't have to know every Git command. That's not the point. The point is to feel really stressed out and actually feel that one vein in your forehead pulse violently as you try to resolve a merge conflict while five other people are passively aggressively sending you incessant Slack messages asking what's taking so long. They're hungry. That way, it isn't so intense when it actually happens at your real workplace. <laughs> Number three, when and how to ask questions. Not everything can be solved by Googling. At the same time, your mentors, coworkers, and bosses are busy doing their thing. Finding the right balance between Googling, troubleshooting, and reaching out can be tough. Harvard graduate and longtime software engineer Itamar Turner Traring recommends using time boxing. Here's how it works. Step one, ask when your assignment or task is due. Step two, now that you know your deadline, set a time box. That is, set a limited amount of time that's less than your deadline. For example, if your project is due tomorrow, you could set your time box to two hours. Step three, once you hit your time box, that is, after those two hours go by, assess where you're at. Are you making good progress? Awesome. Now set another time box. Or are you stuck? Now it's time to reach out for help. Now let's talk about how to ask questions. Eric S. Raymond is not your typical software developer. As his Patreon page states, every time you use a web browser, locate yourself on Google Maps, draw money from an ATM or play on a game console, you rely on computer code I wrote and gave away. No biggie. <laughs> Eric is also the author of How to Ask Questions the Smart Way. A few of his suggestions. Instead of saying, my code won't run, be precise and informative. Describe your problem's symptoms in chronological order. Describe your goal. Tell the person trying to help you what you've tried, what you were expecting to see, and what happened instead. For example, let's say you're working on a really ambitious Python project that aims to overthrow the solar system. You could say, I'm trying to get my Python script to overthrow the solar system so I can be a space god, but I got 
got an error message on line 876 that says script refuses to connect to Pluto. Pluto is not a planet. I was expecting my script to promptly take over Pluto so I can reign supreme over its glacial plains. After I read that error message, I then redefined my Pluto variable to dwarf planet over here on line 875. However, I still got the same error. Script refuses to connect to Pluto. Pluto is not a planet. Do you have any pointers on what I'm doing wrong? This example may sound a bit extreme, but it's pretty clear what your problem is, thus increasing your chances that someone may be able to help you. Number four, reading error messages. That's right, simply reading the error message. You may be surprised how many developers don't do this. When I asked experienced web developers on Reddit what sometimes frustrates them about devs new to the industry, one of the highest voted answers was dun dun dun, not reading the error message. As Meatbody explained, so many questions from junior developers can be answered just by taking the time to read the error message and think about what it's trying to tell you. Swillis93 agreed, saying, plus one for not reading error messages. Seems that a lot of people see red compiler messages and their brain just shuts down. And as According Object 502 succinctly noted, read the error message for f**k's sake, it's literally telling you the problem. And finally, number five on this list of things you must know as a new programmer, how to be a problem solver, not just a coder. It can be extremely tempting to add pages upon pages of new technologies to your resume, but being an employable programmer isn't about memorizing massive quantities of information. That's why we have Stack Overflow. In the book Think Like a Programmer, author V. Anton Sprawl defines problem solving as writing an original problem that performs a particular set of tasks and meets all stated constraints. Developing and implementing an efficient problem solving process can literally be a multi-million dollar skill. So why the hell aren't more people talking about it? Because the thing is, if you're a decent problem solver, you'll be able to pick up just about any technology your potential employers throw at you. Heck, even at my first dev job, most of the technology I was working with on a daily basis was so obscure, there wasn't even a YouTube tutorial on it. Oh my god, I'm literally freaking out. But my boss wasn't stressed out that I didn't know RPG or CL. He knew I could probably just learn it on the job. And I did. The glamour and glitz of modern technology's inner workings can be both mesmerizing and overwhelming. Adding to the chaos, there seems to be a never-ending list of stuff programmers need to learn in order to land even an entry-level job in the industry. It can be discouraging at times. Fortunately, with some mental conditioning and training in a few core subjects, the battle to become a programmer doesn't need to be nearly as brutal as some sources make it out to be. I'm RTC. Thanks for watching.